So I'm going to redraw the Minkowski diagram here. And again, we have space here. And I am going to call this, I am just going to think of it directly as X now. And I am directly going to think of that as T. And I'm going to draw, and, and again, think of this as, you know, uh, light years and years, or light seconds and seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the 45 degree angled line. This is my axis here. And again, we call this a light-like world line. And I want to consider two events. Now, for all of these here, we're, in, we're going to consider this to be event A. So 0, 0, 0, 0, as viewed in our frame S, to be clear. And I'm going to consider a couple different events. I'm going to consider event B. I'm going to consider event C and D here. And now, hopefully you can see, um, of those three points, which of these three events, B, C, and D, fall within the future light cone? Only event D. Sorry, B, I mean. Which of these three events fall outside of the light cone for A? D. And then event C is directly on the light cone, because that, that's essentially how we're defining that light cone, by a light-like world line. And now, I want to ask a question here. Would, well, okay, so um, we, we've already established if, if event B is in event A's light cone, can it be influenced by event A? And the answer is yes. We can send a signal out, and event B, or, or someone at event B, could receive that signal, um, specifically if that signal was not traveling faster than the speed of light. So you can always connect event A to event B with some constant motion less than the speed of light. So this world line I've just drawn is the path that any observer would take if they're moving at a constant velocity, beginning at point A and ending at point B. And now let's, let's consider that particle's motion a little bit more, more in detail. If we have some, you know, some event that is separated, so events A and B clearly are separated in space. And let's say specifically, let's say maybe event B happens to be one light year removed from event A. So it might be four years in the future, you know, so four years have elapsed and one light year has, has gone by space-wise. But you can travel, in theory, a light year in four years of time. So in this case here, you can in fact find some other frame that will begin at point A and it will say it ends exactly at point B. And specifically, if we were to connect them at exactly the right velocity, if you were in a moving spaceship at t equals zero. So by the way, let's, let's say, let's, I'm, I'm actually going to draw a spaceship here. And this is now my reference frame S prime. I have some reference frame, it has its own set of axes. Reference frame S prime at exactly that moment was at the origin, at its own origin, I should say. And then as that spaceship moves at some velocity, at some later time, it's gonna be located at exactly event B. So the important thing is that if you were standing inside that spaceship, and you record event A to happen at exactly, like, right in front of your feet, and then a little time later, you record event B to happen directly below your feet. The important point here is that both of these events happen at the origin for the spaceship. So in the spaceship's frame S prime, both A, I don't need to circle it, a and B are at the origin prime. So what I mean by that is that that's the origin for S prime frame. And you can always, as long as you're within the future light cone, you can always find some speed to move so that those two events, A and any other event B, 
both occur at exactly the origin if you're moving at the proper speed. And that's really important because in that case, so no space elapses between events A and B. No, there is no spatial distance between A and B. And therefore, the only thing that we could say is that the only separation between events A and B, at least in this frame here, the only separation between events A and B is in time. The only space-time separation. And now, I think you can probably make the critique that I'm doing a lot more hand-wavy arguments here. I'm not doing rigid mathematical analysis that everything I'm talking about here is basically coming from definitions or we're trying to analyze motion rather than like, you know, mathematically calculate things. So it is easy to kind of get lost in some of the definitions and some of the, the, the assumptions I might be making in my head, but this is a really important concept here. So if you remember nothing else, remember that between any two events A and B, as long as B falls in A's future light cone, we call these events time-like relative to one another. This pair of events, A and B, are separated only by time. Therefore, we say it's a time-like separation between A and B.